Modern life is pretty fast-paced, which means you need fast-paced transport to keep up. That's where Singapore's long-planned Kuala Lumpur Singapore high-speed rail comes into play. This 350km high-speed rail set to open in 2026 will connect Singapore to the Malaysian capital in only 90 minutes. However, you would have probably heard that this project has had somewhat of a troubled history. So what's the deal with this mode of transportation today, and how would it affect Singapore's economy at all? Let's find out. Hello, and welcome back to our channel Future Planet. In today's video, we will discuss Singapore's insane rail project that shocked the world. Before we continue, take a moment to subscribe to our channel, Future Planet, for more amazing videos just like this one. The idea of the Kuala Lumpur Singapore High Speed Rail was initiated through the Economic Transformation Program to transform Singapore into a high income nation. This project is expected to become the first high-speed railway in Southeast Asia, and the fastest point-to-point -point mode of public transport between two of Southeast Asia's most vibrant and fast-growing economic engines. However, the Singapore terminus of the route would be at Yurong East, at the site of the former Yurong Country Club. The Kuala Lumpur terminus would be at Bandar, Malaysia. The line would have crossed the Strait of Johor via a 25-meter high bridge near the second link, and a tunnel portal and siding facilities would have been built at the site of the former Raffles Country Club. A new company named MyHSR was formed to take ownership and development of the project. The Suru Hanaya Pengakutan Awandarat Land Public Transport Commission of Malaysia is the policymaker and regulator for coordinating the project within the Malaysian Corridor, while the Land Transport Authority of Singapore is in charge of the Singapore Corridor. First announced in 2013, the 350 km line would follow the west coast of the Malay Peninsula, including eight stations in total, with seven stations in Malaysia and in Singapore. International services would operate from Kuala Lumpur, Iskandar Puteri, and Singapore, with a co-located customs facility at these three stations. International passengers would clear customs of both countries at their point of departure. Though the railway platforms are below grade, the design seeks to form an above-ground civil landmark that celebrates this new international gateway to Singapore, inspired by Beijing South and Guangzhou South high-speed stations. The terminus incorporates airport-style segregation of arriving and departing passengers to maximize efficiency and accommodate customs, immigration, and quarantine requirements. The line will include a double track on a standard gauge and will be powered with proven high-speed technologies. Trains on the line are expected to run at a speed of 300 km per hour. Express service will take a journey time of 90 minutes, while transit service will take 120 minutes on the same route. The Kuala Lumpur-Singapore High-Speed Rail Agreement was signed in 2016, committing both nations to this $13 billion project. Originally, construction was expected to begin in 2017 and is projected to open in 2026. But project delays have pushed back both dates to May 2020 and January 2031 instead. Then, things changed. With the sudden change in government during the 2018 elections in Malaysia, time was taken to reassess many of the financial commitments made under the previous administration. This cost-checking initiative formed part of a wider view to reduce Malaysia's $223 billion debt that was controversially inherited from the previous administration. The Prime Minister at the time, Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, expressed concern about the significant cost of the Kuala Lumpur-Singapore high-speed rail project, as part of a wide review of these scheduled mega-projects in Malaysia. In September 2018, at the request of Malaysia, both governments agreed to postpone the project until May 31, 2020, to allow for the identification of cost reduction options, including reviewing and optimizing the alignment, station locations, and business models. Anyhow, the deferment resulted in Malaysia paying $11 million as compensation for the abortive costs incurred by Singapore. The payment was made at the end of January 2019. But in May 2020, the deferment was again extended to December 31st. The decision to cancel the project will incur a cost for the country. Previously, it was reported that Malaysia would have to reimburse Singapore for the project implementation costs, incurred by the latter up to the point of suspension. This project was called off on January 1, 2021, after Singapore could not agree to Malaysia's proposed changes. 
In March 2021, Malaysia announced that it had paid $70.8 million to Singapore for costs incurred for the development of the Kuala Lumpur-Singapore high-speed rail project and in relation to the extension of its suspension. It would be fair to say that the originally announced cancellation of this project caused a little bit of friction between Malaysia and Singapore. So, what do you guys think? Is it over? Well, keep watching as we are going to discuss some latest developments about this project. According to Malaysia Transport Minister Datuk Seri Wika Siong, talks with Singapore about the revival of the Kuala Lumpur-Singapore high-speed rail will start this year. We told Parliament that his ministry had been tasked to initiate discussions with the Singapore government and that talks were still in the early stages. Currently, the transport ministry is preparing to hold preliminary discussions with Singapore, he said. Now this isn't all a surprise. The dead and buried Kuala Lumpur Singapore high-speed rail popped up again when Prime Minister Datuk Seri Ismail Sabri Yaakob made an official visit to Singapore in November 2021. Then he suggested reviving discussions on this project with his Singaporean counterpart Lee Haseen Long. Lee said then, Prime Minister Ismail Sabri suggested reviving discussions on the Kuala Lumpur-Singapore high-speed rail. I responded to the Prime Minister that Singapore and Malaysia had previously reached an agreement to terminate this project, and this had been amicably settled and closed. The Singapore Prime Minister added, Nevertheless, Singapore is open to fresh proposals from Malaysia on the high-speed rail project, and the two ministries of transport will discuss the matter. Singapore looks forward to receiving more details from Malaysia so that we can study them and consider the matter again, starting from a clean slate. The route between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore is currently served by three main modes of transportation, including air, road, and an existing intercity rail network. As far as air travel between the two neighbors is concerned, the officials shared that there are about 500 flights a week from Singapore to seven destinations across Malaysia. This necessitated the need to improve the connectivity between the two countries, as the current traffic exceeds the capacity of the existing means of transport. This service was projected to run 10 car-long trains, with a capacity for up to 100 passengers per car at average speeds of 300 km per hour, which, as we mentioned before, would bring the rail travel time between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore down to 90 minutes. Furthermore, the estimated investment of the project is $13 billion, but sources say that cost will be much higher than this. The funding sources are yet to be decided as the cost should be distributed between the Singapore and Malaysian governments. However, the Kuala Lumpur-Singapore high-speed rail is more than just a transportation project. It is an impetus toward socio-economic development in Singapore and the intermediate cities along the project corridor. Starting with economic clusters centered around each station, this will ultimately change how people live, work, and travel entirely. The high-speed rail project was projected to add $4.6 billion to the economies of Singapore and Malaysia, creating 111,000 jobs by 2060. The long-term benefits of low-carbon travel were also seen as a significant plus point, reducing carbon emissions on travel between Kuala Lumpur and Singapore. Well, the connectivity will enable businesses to be more productive and access a broader marketplace, while the public will enjoy an improved travel experience of shorter travel time and a comfortable ride through the high-speed rail city center to city center connection along the corridor. So, with that, our video has come to an end here. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We always love to read out your comments. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel, Future Planet, and hit the bell icon so you will be notified whenever we upload a video. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, goodbye.